And what we want to talk about very briefly in this short amount of time is one of the du'as of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he made many du'as, many profound du'as, many du'as which were very short and yet very wide in meaning. One of those particular du'as from amongst the many du'as of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one du'a was Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina This particular Dua of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very comprehensive, very jami' and it has a lot of meaning and it has a lot of different things which we can cover. Allahumma inni as'aluk al-huda. Oh Allah, I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you that you give me guidance, you give hidayat and guidance. And this is something which we as Muslims recite in our daily salah. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Again and again, again and again. So much so that if a person does not, when they are praying, if they are praying individually and they do not even say then the Fatiha, then their salah will not be valid. So for this very reason, it is this why this and this dua is in this Fatiha. But Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda, asking Allah for guidance, subhanallah, as if Rasul sallallahu as if he needed guidance. He was al-hadi, al-mahdi, he was already guided, but he even used to ask Allah for more as well. Second thing, Allahumma inni as'aluk al-huda, wa tuqa wa tuqa we would translate as piety. Piety, God-fearingness. And we will touch on this in just a minute, insha'Allah. Wal-afaf, afaf, chastity, purity. From what? From doing anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From doing any such thing which will cause the displeasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. From getting yourself into a situation which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala dislikes. Wal ghina, translated ghina, it means wealth. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not commanded to seek money. However, to ask for this much that I do not want to extend my hand in front of other people. Let me have what is referred to as being uh, self-sufficient. Let me have enough where I don't need to be- put my hand in front of others. Ghina and wealth. And also if I mention something as well, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, having a lot of houses, having a lot of land, having a lot of wealth. I'm using houses as a modern day translation. Kathratul ard. Kathratul, kathratul ard. Having lots of land, having lots of la- earth. Having this in your possession doesn't make you a wealthy individual. Verily, wealth really comes when your heart is rich and you feel like you are a rich man. Otherwise, we can give multitudes of examples of people who have inherited billions, millions, and in terms of a worldly point of view, they are so well advanced because that is what we have made the objective of our lives today. And we will class that as success. However, we see that people are toppling themselves, even throwing themselves into the, uh, to the qabr and even finishing their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. We want to talk about this second part very briefly in the limited time we have because the month of Ramadan just passed by and we are now seeing the month just after that. Why taqwa? Why should we talk about this now? Allah wa ta'ala told us, reminded us, instructed us. The reason why fasting is made being incumbent upon you, why do you have to fast? Why do you have to keep roza? Why do you have to make psalm? Is for one reason and one reason only. You develop the quality of taqwa. You become a muttaqi. You become muttaqoon. You fear Allah wa ta'ala. I'm using the word fear. But taqwa has a meaning wider than just the word fear. If I mention by way of Muhaddithun, Allama ibn Allan al Shafi'i, look in his Dalil al Falihin, you'll find a very nice bahath there. Just very quick summarize two words or two sentences will cover the whole meaning of taqwa. Number one, Imtithalul Awamir. Imtithalul Awamir. What does that mean? Fulfilling the commands of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Imtithal, awamir, the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And wa ijdina nawahi. Those things which my Allah and your Allah said don't do, we don't do. That is taqwa. These two collective things are referred to as taqwa. Even in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, it mentions something along these lines as well. That taqwa is what? Doing good deeds and abstaining from haram. This in essence is what taqwa is. It comes from the root word wiqaya. Wiqaya to shield yourself, to protect yourself. Protect yourself from what? Protect yourself from whom? To protect yourself from the ghadab and the, ang- ghadab and the anger of Allah wa ta'ala. Because when one person does that thing which Allah dislikes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes this. 
And then the wrath of Allah can descend on such an individual. But when a person does which Allah loves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives more tawfiq to do even more good deeds. This is why Faqih Abu Layth as samarqandi rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned a very very fine point. He mentioned that individual, that man, that woman, that youngster, that Muslim, that found the month of Ramadan, وَلَمْ يَزْدَدْ لَهُمْ خَيْرًا But they, they never increased in any good a'mal. They never increased after Ramadan with anything decent. Their ibadah stayed stagnant. Ramadan, there was a pulse of up and then it went swiftly back down. Those people whose condition is this, I hate to tell you for the set record straight, Allah wa ta'ala, my dear brother and sister, did not even accept your Ramadan. This is not the words of me, where I can make such a bold claim. Rather, Faqih Abu Layth as samarqandi a great Faqih of the past. Look, I mean, subhanAllah, just think back and reminisce. What was our Ramadan like? Subhanallah. I know, mashaAllah, Ramadan is a time when we are filling up our plates with foods and everyone's feet, feet freezes are full of samosas and kebabs. We know this. But in terms of a'mal, in terms of actions, by compared before until now, what was the difference? What is the difference? Is there a drop? Is there an increase? What is the situation and the condition of our life? If unfortunately we have not increased in any good a'mal, then really, very really know that Ramadan came and it just went. We didn't achieve the maximum benefit of what Ramadan had to offer. Undoubtedly, Undoubtedly, the fard will go from our heads. We can say, okay, the fard has been done. But what is the real fruit from Ramadan which we left off with? And that was taqwa. That was the quality of taqwa, which I just explained. A- acting upon the commands of Allah, abstaining from the things which are haram. This is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa oh Allah, give us taqwa. Give us this, period, this, this quality of taqwa. Now I know you'll find people translated God-fearing, 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 but it, is, it entails more than that. Because it also includes an element of making amal and practice on the things which Allah likes. Imagine this. Imagine this for a moment. You're never going to see someone again. <coughs> and they say to you, give me some lasting parting advice and something of importance. That would have to be such an important thing that if you were to take into consideration everything which was mentioned before, this had to outweigh everything. This is the last time you're going to see this individual. They are asking you, they are requesting you, please give me some nasiha, give me some advice, give me something that I can go and I can think about and I can ponder over and so on and so forth. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was with Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the famous sahabi, one of the fuqaha of sahaba, that went to Yemen, he mentions, لَمَّا بَعَثَهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَى الْيَمَنِ فَخَرَجَ مَعَهُ يُوصِيهِ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم And those who understand the Arabic can appreciate that a little bit more. But when Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم sent Mu'adh to Yemen, he went with him and he started walking along with him. Yusihi. He was giving him advice, wasiya. He was giving him last moments of advice. And then he had to give a final bit. Many, many advices were given. What to do, how, what not to do, and so on and so forth. But one of the last bits of advice which he gave, it had to have held importance. He said to him, Ya Mu'adh, innaka satalqani ba'da ammi hadha, fala'allaka tamurru bi masjidi wa qabri. Ya O Mu'adh, you, you will come again. Innaka satalqani ba'da ammi hadha. You will come and meet me after the passing by of this year. You will not pass by me. You will not see me. You will not see Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَمُرُّ بِمَسْجِدِ وَقَبْرِ I hate to break the news to you, O Mu'adh, but I think you're going to pass by my, my masjid and you are going to pass by my qabr and my grave. It, just imagine this for a moment. This is not just some dos yar, some, some, some dude on the street saying, Asalaamu Alaikum to a next man. Where this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying something like this to Mu'adh.